Good morning. morning. Let me welcome you to our service of worship here at First Presbyterian Church on this St. Patrick's Day, where it is okay to be Irish, even if you're not. And uh, it's it's great to see all the the green out there. I did not realize until I got here. Um, So this is not this is not a snub at St. Patrick or anything Irish. Uh, I would encourage you look that story up. Uh, St. Patrick was one of the great early Christian missionaries in, uh, in Ireland and Great Britain. Uh, just a, an amazing story. If you've never read it before, um, put that on your to-do list for today. We do have a couple of announcements before we begin our service of worship. And uh, I want to start with Lisa Doubt. She has just uh, an update on our event last night. Good morning. First of all, I just want to say thank you to everyone who helped to organize our chili and soup cook-off and silent auction, and to all of you who donated items for the auction as well. It was a success, I would say. Those of you who attended, I think you might say that as well. We had uh, some, our chili winner is in in the house right now, Mr. Appenell over there. Oh, so congratulations. And our soup winner is also in the house, Emily Purinton, so. It was a sausage tortellini soup, correct? And it was just a beef chili? Yes, just a beef chili. Nothing fancy, just chili. So it was good. So congratulations to you all for winning. I just wanted to uh, give you a total as to where we are and what we have collected up until this point. We have collected $1,818. So thank you very much. This fundraiser uh, was for our youth mission trips that will be happening this summer. I know some of you have money yet to turn in and you can get that to me at any time, that's fine. Also, in the Great Hall, there are two tables that have items on them that are up for you to donate money to. So if you go upstairs to the Great Hall, or downstairs, sorry, wherever we are, however you get there from here, if you go to the Great Hall from here, You will see that there are two tables with items. Please take time to look over those, and if there's something there that you really want, all you need to do is donate a little something to our youth ministry fund. We would appreciate that. So thank you all very much. A couple other announcements I want to draw your attention to. Our our calendar this week, uh, today, following worship, we'll be having a congregational meeting. Uh, That meeting will be brief, but it's important. We are updating our congregation's bylaws. Uh, The last time we did that was 1984. Uh, Ronald Reagan was on his second term as president, and Steve Jobs had just introduced the Macintosh personal computer. Um, Boy, if only I could have invested in that then. Uh, So please stay for that meeting. Our, Our new edition of our bylaws is blessedly thin, So uh, it will not take a lot of time, but it is an important event that uh, requires the congregation's approval. This Wednesday will be our final uh, noon soup and scripture at Christ Lutheran Church. Uh, We're kind of wrapping that up. There won't be a a soup and scripture lunch during Holy Week, so so this is the week to to come at noon and and join in that fellowship. Next Sunday at 6 p.m. here at our church in the Great Hall, we'll be offering a soup and scripture evening edition. And uh, this is just in recognition by the Council of Churches that not everybody can make a a noon luncheon meal. We wanted to open this opportunity for fellowship fellowship up to to families and those who might be working or or out of the area during the day. So next Sunday at 6 p.m. we'll have a a soup and sandwich uh, dinner and a time for devotional. We'll have folks here from other churches in the area, and I would just encourage you to come and and participate in that. Another great event coming up is Rise Against Hunger. Uh, This is our opportunity to partner with that organization to feed hungry people around the world, and I think we do have a a slide for that. Uh, Our goal uh, goal is kind of twofold. Uh, The first part is a, a monetary commitment to Rise Against Hunger. They provide all the food and all the packaging that goes into these meals. Uh, As you can see, we are almost at $1,000. We have a $2,250 goal. So we are are well on our way and and working towards that. The other thing that we need for this event is uh, our hands, uh, volunteers. 
And regardless of your age or ability, there is a job that you can do as we put these meals together, whether that's measuring or sorting or labeling or, or carrying boxes, there is, there's a place for you. You can sign up online, and if you, uh, if you see in the bulletin, there's a, there's a link down at the bottom of the page there. You can go to that to sign up or to make a donation. Uh, and one more note, uh, today is the last day to order Easter flowers. So uh, if you would like to, to have a flower uh, in memory or in honor of someone, uh, I would ask you please get that order into the office today. Are there any other announcements for this morning? I will be putting a paper sign up hunger in the parlor. So it'll be down there today uh, near, the, near the bulletin board. So you can sign up there as well. For the season of Lent, uh, I want to invite Mackenzie and Natalie to come forward for our Lenten wreath. Jesus came to bring the light into the world, but at every step, the chief priests and elders met together and made plans to arrest Jesus secretly and put him to death. We must not do it during the festival, they said, or the people will run. buy a kiss from a friend for 30 pieces of silver. It could have been any one of them. It could have been any one of us. Jesus' light was too brilliant for those who liked the darkness. As the small bag of coins was traded from hand to hand, a little more of the light went out. Please stand with me for our call to worship. God sent Jesus Christ not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. God is our refuge and our strength, a present help in trouble. We will not fear, for God's love endures forever. Let us worship God. Our opening hymn is number 320, Beneath the Cross of Jesus.
Good morning. The Apostle Paul writes, in the name of Christ, I urge you, be reconciled to God. Trusting in God's mercy and grace, let us confess our sin. Let us pray together. Through this season of Lent, we pray for clean hearts and right spirits. Forgive us, O Lord, if we have prayed with our words, but failed to pray with our actions. Forgive us of what we have done that has contributed to the suffering of another. Forgive us of what we have failed to do that could have lightened our neighbor's burden. Forgive us, O God, and wash us in your mercy. Forgive us, O God, and free us to try again. Return us the paths of righteousness through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The assurance of pardon is taken from 2 Corinthians 6, 2. Listen, the time has come at last. Look, now is the day of salvation. Hear and believe the good news, Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia, amen. Thanks be to God. At this time, we'll observe the passing of the peace of Christ. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Please greet your neighbors. from Psalm 51, 1 to 17. It's on page 889 in your pew Bible. This was written for the director of music, and it's a Psalm of David. They feel that this was written when the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you were right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. 
Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, you who are God, my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts and mind.
Good morning, everyone. Fifth graders and under, if you want to come on up. Hi, Charlotte. Hey, guys. All right. A good turnout. All right, I'm going to count us off real quick. Lily, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Okay? My ones stay up here, and my twos stand up over here. And I'll tell you what we're doing. You're a one. Yay. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Let's try again. <laughs> one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. It's just real quick, okay? Just real quick. So if you're a one, stay up here. If you're a two, stand up. Okay, good. All right, so my ones, you guys are going to pretend that you're sheep. Sorry, my back's to everybody. So you're going to pretend that you're sheep and you're sleeping. So you're going to kind of turn around and you're going to put your heads down and pretend you're sleeping, okay? You guys are the foxes, okay? So I want you to kind of spread out and you can, yep, you can kind of go down the, the aisle a little bit. Good. And you are going to sneak up on the sheep but you gotta be really, really quiet, okay? Sheep, you're sound asleep. You had a long day eating grass and you are not hearing anything, okay? All right, ready, foxes? Oh no, they got you, they got you. All right, let's swap places. So my foxes, you guys are gonna be the sheep, okay? And my sheep, you're gonna be the foxes. So you guys go over here. But before we do this next one, would somebody volunteer from out here to stand up for us for just a second? I need you to come up front. Nope, we're gonna ask one of our friends. Will you help us? Just real quick, I promise you don't have to do anything but stand. Okay, come on, Natalie. All right, foxes, go down this way a little bit. Nope, stand up, Lily. There we go. All right, Natalie, you're the shepherd, okay? You keep those foxes away from the sheep. So you stand there, don't really hit anybody, but you keep them away, okay? All right, sheep, you're sound asleep. Foxes, you gotta back up some, Lily. All right, now you gotta creep, but you are scared of this shepherd. So if she comes at you, you can't go any further, okay? All right, ready, go. Uh-oh, the foxes went wild, all right. Good try. Thank you, sweetie. All right, let's all sit down. Good stuff. So we got the idea. <laughs> yeah, I know. It didn't work out perfect. It never does. That's all right, though. Okay, so what is the shepherd? What does the shepherd do for the sheep? Except you crazy foxes. That didn't work so well. But what does a shepherd do for sheep? Yeah, they help them, right? They protect them, so they keep them safe. What other things do shepherds do for their sheep? Do you know? We've talked about shepherds and sheep a lot, haven't we? Yeah. So the shepherds make sure that the sheep have food, that they're in places that they can eat. They lead them to places where they can sleep and drink and be safe. They really protect them, right? So did you know that Jesus is our shepherd? We've kind of talked about this a little bit. But Jesus is our shepherd. He keeps us safe. He helps us to have things to eat and to drink and provide for what we need. He also helps keep us from getting lost from him. Because just like sheep sometimes will wander away from their shepherds, sometimes we do the same thing with Jesus, right? We don't always listen to what we know we're supposed to do. But just like that shepherd is always watching over his sheep, Jesus is always watching over us and helping us stay where we need to stay and protect us. There's a verse in the book of John that says, this is what Jesus is saying to us. He says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know my Father. And I lay down my life for my sheep. How cool is that? So Jesus is saying, I know every single one of you, and I will give my life to take care of you. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. 
Thanks for your help today. You guys did good. Let's say our prayer, and then you guys are going to go to Kids Church with Mrs. Fisher today, okay? All right. Let's do our repeat. Dear God, thank you for taking care of us like a shepherd cares for his sheep. Help us not to wander from you and listen to your directions. In Jesus' name, amen. Good job, guys. Please join with me in prayer. Lord God, we thank you for your living word, which is sharper than any two-edged sword. Lord, we ask that your spirit would move and pierce any gloom or darkness, any anxiety or confusion that hides you from our sight. Lord, we ask that your spirit would speak to us words of grace and hope and peace in Jesus Christ. And Lord, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts would be found holy and acceptable in your sight, you who are our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Just a a little introduction for this morning. When you compare the Bible's four Gospels, those opening books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, in ministry, but you also notice that the Gospel of John, well, the Gospel of John is just different. One of the things that's different about John's record is what's missing. There's no Christmas story in John, at least not like the angels and the shepherds and the wise men that we find in Luke and Matthew. No, the closest that John gets to Christmas is when he says, The Word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. Now the same is true at the end of the Gospels. In John's Gospel, there is no Last Supper. John, the closest thing we find to a parable, are statements where Jesus says, I am. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the bread of life. I am the true vine. And kind of like a parable, Jesus' I am statements in John, they explain and they reveal who Jesus is. That he is the Son of God, that he is the Word become flesh, that he is the light of the world. And they explain what Jesus does for us and for the world. And so as we read these words of Jesus from John chapter 10 this morning, another one of Jesus' I am statements, I invite you to hear it like you might hear a parable. Consider what it means that we are sheep. Consider what it means that Jesus is our shepherd and a very good shepherd at that. I invite you to listen now to the word of God found in John chapter 10, Verses 1 to 18. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter by the sheep pen, enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them. And his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what Jesus was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. 
They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So the people who heard Jesus speak these words, they lived their entire life working in and around livestock of various species. I know very, very little about sheep. And to be honest with you, I know even less about being a shepherd of sheep, Emily's demonstration notwithstanding. I'm also going to assume that this is true for most of you. Am I right in that? And here's the so what there. When, when I hear Jesus call himself not just a shepherd, but a good shepherd, and that adjective good, that could just as easily be translated as noble or beautiful or honorable shepherd. Well, I'm not totally sure what that means. I mean, how would I know what separates, what distinguishes a good or a noble shepherd from a bad or an immoral one? Again, I'm no expert on sheep or on shepherding. Anybody here an expert on sheep or on shepherding? Oh, we, we do have one. All right. Well, Bonnie, you can tell me if I'm right on this or not. But I, I went and consulted an expert. His name is Dr. Philip Keller. And I encountered Dr. Keller through his study of a book called A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23. You can probably find it on Amazon or, or find it floating around, maybe over in the Himmelreich. Philip Keller was uh, born in Kenya to missionary parents. He was trained in agriculture. He worked as an agricultural development specialist, as a wildlife photographer, a naturalist, and he kept sheep. And he did this for many, many years. So he is, he is an expert. And Dr. Keller's professional training and many years of experience, they give us a look at sheep and at shepherding through the eyes of someone who can really understand and appreciate what Jesus is trying to say. So as I share some of his, his thoughts, my hope is that it'll help us understand and appreciate Jesus better too. So first, a, a little bit about sheep. Dr. Keller says, The strange thing about sheep is that because of their very makeup, it is almost impossible for them to be made to lie down unless four requirements are met. Owning to their timidity, sheep refuse to lie down unless they are free of all fear. Because of the social behavior within a flock, Sheep will not lie down unless they are free from friction with others of their kind. Apparently, sheep don't go to bed angry. Three, if tormented by flies or parasites, sheep will not lie down. Only when free of these pests can they relax. 
And four, lastly, sheep will not lie down as long as they feel in need of finding food. Sheep must be free from hunger. I, too, have a hard time going to sleep hungry. It's significant, he says, that for sheep to be at rest, there must be a definite sense of freedom from fear, tension, aggravations, and hunger. The unique aspect of the picture is that only the shepherd himself can provide release from these anxieties. Whether or not his flock is free of disturbing influences all depends upon the diligence of the owner. It is actually the shepherd himself, Keller says, who makes it possible for the sheep to lie down and to rest, to relax, to be content, to be quiet, and to flourish. A flock that is restless, discontented, always agitated and disturbed, never does well. The same, Dr. Keller says, is true of people. And I would agree. So knowing this about sheep helps explain what it takes to be a good shepherd. Being a good shepherd requires constant vigilance. It requires long hours of hard work. It, it, it requires an extraordinary commitment to those animals. Being a good shepherd is more than just a job, more than just something you clock in and clock out, you know, to pay the bills. Good shepherding is not a pastime, it's a profession. It's not just what you do, it's, it's who you are. And maybe that's why Jesus draws such a sharp distinction between the good shepherd and the hired hand. One will risk life and limb for the sheep, and the other will not. Jesus warns against those who lead the sheep only out of self-interest or self-concern. For these, Jesus says, will turn and run when the wolves attack. They will abandon their sheep at the first sign of danger. In sharp contrast, the good, the noble, the beautiful shepherd loves his sheep so much that he will lay down his life for them. And we know that this is what Jesus has done for us. Now right there, that's, that's a lot to think about. But if we look at our passage from John, we see there's a lot more to Jesus' example. In this passage, Jesus talks about a gate, a shepherd, a gatekeeper, a group of sheep, a group of thieves and bandits. And in verse 7, Jesus explicitly claims to be the gate. I tell you the truth, Jesus says, I am the gate for the sheep. Then in verse 11, he explicitly claims to be the shepherd. I am the good shepherd. And depending on how you look at it, Jesus might even be the gatekeeper at the same time. Look at verse 3. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. Jesus the shepherd enters Jesus the gate because Jesus, maybe the gatekeeper, opens it for him so that he can get to the sheep. Hold on a minute. This just got really complicated. Either Jesus is having an identity crisis or he's mixing his metaphors or maybe Jesus is trying to make a larger point. As Jesus says, the good shepherd is also the gate. The shepherd is both the man and the means through which the sheep find refuge and safety and fulfilling pasture. The good shepherd provides for their protection and their care. The good shepherd does all that must be done to ensure their peace their safety, their well-being, even at the cost of his own. Keller expands on this as he writes, The parallel between shepherd and sheep and Jesus and us is that like a good shepherd must, Jesus has already gone before us into every situation and every danger that we might encounter. We are told emphatically in Hebrews 4 that he, Jesus, was tempted in all points like we are. 
We know that Jesus entered fully and completely and intimately into life as we know it. Jesus has he's known our sufferings. He's experienced our sorrow. He has endured our struggles. As it says in Isaiah, he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Jesus, our good shepherd, he understands us. He has totally identified himself with humanity. He has a care and compassion for us that is beyond our ability to grasp. Jesus makes every possible provision to ensure that when we have to cope with Satan or we have to cope with sin, when we have to cope with ourselves, the contest will not be one-sided. Rather, we can be sure that Jesus, our good shepherd, has been in that situation before and he is in it now again with us. This attitude of rest in him, of confidence in his care. It is this reliance not on what we ourselves can endure, but rather our trust in what Jesus endures for us. This is what makes the Christian life one of calm and quiet confidence. In short, Keller says, Jesus coming to earth as the Christ was a straightforward case of utter self-sacrifice that culminated in the cross. The life laid down, the poured out blood, they are supreme symbols of total selflessness. This is love. This is God. This is divinity in action, delivering humanity from our own utter selfishness, from our own stupidity, from our own hopeless instincts, we who are lost sheep, unable to help ourselves. In all of this, there is, there is an amazing mystery. And perhaps at best, we can only grasp the incredible concept of a perfect person, the sinless Son of God, coming willingly to be made sin so that we who are so full of faults, so that we might be set free from sin, free from self, to live a new, a free, a fresh, and an abundant life. Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Just as the shepherd is thrilled beyond words to see his sheep thriving on the rich summer pasture, so too our good shepherd is pleased when he sees us flourishing, when he sees us wholeheartedly committed and following, however imperfectly, however sheepishly we may, seeking the life that he has made possible. Part of the mystery and the wonder of the cross of God's love for us in Jesus Christ is bound up with the deep desire of God's heart to have us live on that higher plane. God is pleased when we walk in ways of holiness and selflessness, contentment in his care, when we are aware of his presence and enjoying the intimacy of his companionship. To live thus is to live richly. What does it mean that Jesus is our good, our beautiful, our noble shepherd? It means that from Jesus, from the Christ, we receive life. Life here and now and forever after. A kind of life which we could never reach, never achieve, never deserve, apart from his love. How good it is to be counted among his sheep. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen.
As a response to God's word today, I would ask that you please join me in the Apostles' Creed. You can find this on the back cover of your hymnal or we'll have it printed on the screen. Would you please stand with me as we affirm our faith together? Please be seated. And let us go before the Lord our God in prayer. Lord God, without you, we are lost. And Lord, I thank you that in Jesus Christ you came to seek us out. Lord, you came to call us by name. Lord, you came to lead us out into your kingdom, into a new and abundant life. Lord, I ask that you would help us to hear your call. Lord God, we thank you that you walk beside us, that you know our struggles and our griefs and our sorrows. Lord, you know our cares and our concerns. Lord, there is nothing that we face that you have not already faced and overcome. And so, Lord, we pray this day for your grace. We pray for your strength. We pray for your healing. Lord, we pray for your mercy and forgiveness. Lord, we thank you for the hope and the life that we find in you. Lord, we ask that you would be with those especially who are burdened with with the pain of grief and sorrow and loss. Lord, we pray that you would comfort them and be near to them. Lord, we pray that you would be with those who are suffering from injury or illness. Lord, be with those whose wounds are, are not visible. Lord, we pray that you would lift from them any pain, discomfort, Lord, release them from fear and anxiety, from depression. Lord, we thank you that we belong to you. And we ask that you would use us as your people. Lord, that you would make us visible to the world as your flock. That you would inspire us to do your work. Lord, that you would help us to make the the difficult decisions, the unpopular decisions, so that we might follow you. And go where you lead. Lord, we pray that your spirit would be at work in this community, in this congregation. Lord, that those who are still in the dark and still searching might see your light and hear your call. Lord, we ask that you would bring peace to this world and peace to our hearts. Lord, where there is trouble and conflict, Lord, we pray that you, would, that you would just resolve that. Lord, we pray for those in authority. We ask that cooler heads would prevail. Lord, we pray that you would use those in authority to bring peace and relief to those who are suffering. Lord, we thank you that you know us and love us. Lord, that you are here for us. Lord, that you have made the ultimate sacrifice on our behalf and laid down our life that we might rise to new life with you. And so, Lord, it is with great confidence and joy that we pray together the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we have heard God's call, I would ask you to consider how you can respond, how you can use your gifts of time, talent, and treasure for Jesus and his kingdom. And I would ask our ushers to please come forward and receive this morning's gifts and offerings. Lord God, we thank you for all that you have provided for us. Lord, that we, we work and sleep and travel and play under your care. Lord, we ask that you would help us to turn our eyes and our hearts to you. And Lord, we ask that you would use everything that we offer to you in a, in a powerful and an effective way beyond what we can imagine. Lord, we thank you that we are your people, the sheep of your flock. We pray this with thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, just a reminder before our closing hymn that we do have a congregational meeting right after the benediction. Uh, there are copies of the bylaws out on the narthex and on the table here. Uh, you are allowed to leave to go pick up a copy, but then you have to come back. All right? That's what we're doing. So our closing hymn is number 694.
please join hands with those beside you and ask God's blessing on the hands you hold. Lord God, we ask that you would bless us and keep us, that you would be kind and gracious to us. Lord, that you would lift up the light of your face upon us and grant us peace. And may that peace that passes our understanding keep our hearts and minds at rest in Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. Go out to love and serve the Lord. Hey, Bill. Yeah. Okay. You got some comments? All right. Does who? Does Rob have to keep the meeting on the... No, he, no. he wouldn't have to. That'd be all right. You can cut it. You don't need it on anymore. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>